It's Monday, so that means a lot of studs and a lot of duds to break down. Hopefully things went your way over the weekend. Make sure you subscribe to this channel right now and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Monday, November 20th. Everybody back together again. It's good to be back. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. What a weekend it was. See, not back my my teams, but we move on. Not back A-chan. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, oh, man. Oh, man. I I mean, just to reflect on that really quickly, uh, obviously that was the story of the weekend. Devon A-chan took all this time Your to, get, story. to get back. And... Well, yeah, Mike, your story began on Thursday with Andrew's yeah. in injury and yeah, Burrow's injury. You're, it's not done yet. It's not part of the weekend, Mike. <laughs> this is the weekend story. But, you know, it's Sunday Live yesterday, I strolled in. I watched Jason do his thing. So bullish on Devon H. And, oh, yeah. And just the future. And then they, you know, they, they, they sat Jeff Wilson down and they kept Ahmed because he can return some kicks. And it, so it's like, okay, obviously H. And's the two uh, to, to Mostert. Got in super early. Yeah, yeah he was and, ready to go. And we were uh, what an idiot, Jason! <laughs> what an idiot you are! Yeah, they, yeah, I mean, guilty as charged. <laughs> well, I mean, the story I told you was like the entire morning. My opponent had HN on his bench, and it seemed like maybe he wouldn't put him in, and I was terrified, terrified that he put him in. And then he put him in, and you were very upset. I was. I was terrified. And then, and then the I Dolphins wasn't. And then I in, wasn't. And then the Dolphins put him in, and you were like. <sighs> Oh, okay. Well, I mean, uh, just one of many storylines this weekend. So we'll see what uh, you think about his future for this year. Uh, really devastating for fantasy players that had waited. Um, and and we'll get into it. But uh, a couple things at the top. The Megalodon episode of the show. <laughs> the gurgling Megalodon <laughs> episode. What is that? That is a uh, special Thanksgiving episode where we wrap the Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday shows into one episode, one megalodon-sized adventure, and that will be Wednesday. It's our biggest show of the year. It is not just in scope and size, which is also true, but also downloads most listened. You're you're traveling for Thanksgiving. You're going cross-country. Don't worry. We got you with the longest episode of all time. And we normally throw a hashtag in there. In fact, we've had uh, two years ago, dinner butter was uh, trending. We were rivaling. We were just under Thanksgiving. Last year, do you remember the hashtag for last year? Yes. I don't. It was Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, oh, yeah. We, we stumbled into some mis I mean, it was a bit of a mistake, a, I guess. Yeah. Well, it was very funny because the – there was some thirsty people on Twitter that got real big mad. <laughs> they got I upset. I guess that, that's what it was, is people would click on the hashtag looking for something different than what we meant. <laughs> Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. So we'll the figure out the hashtag, C's. and if you tweet it, uh, uh, you will be entered to win some some swag. Do we know what we're giving away yet, Brooks? You can tell them. We're giving away a DK Metcalf signed jersey. Ooh. We, we played a Javante Williams signed jersey. Oh, we're doubling up? Whoa. And an A.J. Brown signed mini home. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Whoa, hot stuff. Wow. Hashtag Thanksgiving on the giveaways. <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll have that on Wednesday. Man, we're not playing around there with those giveaways. No, no, we're broke. Um, <laughs> at the FF Ballers on the artist formerly known as Twitter. You can follow Jason at JasonFFL. Follow Mike at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. And uh, we put the Monday Punday threads out there as usual. And I thought they were pretty good this week. A lot of reaction to the weekend. Big games. And uh, let's jump into Monday Punday. And let's start with a great performance mm. from Brock Perfect. He's perfect. <laughs> perfect passer. Rating. And Jalen Soren. Brandon 
Hayuken. And uh, how about Tank Delicious? Mm, mm. Or Jaden Ridiculous. Yeah, he was good. Brees, hallelujah. <laughs> there was some bad. There was some bad this weekend. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, Scam Laporta. Or my Devon Ouchan. Oh, or no. Devon IR Chan, yeah. And uh, I thought you'd like this one, Jason. Hollywood Brown Pants. Yeah. Yeah, he's not good. Uh, I love this guy, Quentin Dropston. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and uh, why is even Jared Goffel? Jared Goffel? It, it turned out okay. He was all right. Better than Turd Ferguson. And if you had oh, this my guy. Gosh. Mm, Garrett Will Stocks. <laughs> Will Stocks? Will Stocks. Why is there a T in there? Eh, it's just an accident. <laughs> You want to try it again? Garrett Wilsock. All right. <laughs> so, oh. so you added a T and an S at the end? I, you know what it is? I'm going to interpret it for him. Okay. He, he, this week, it was Garrett Wilsock, but people with him are Garrett Wilsock. Yeah. Mm, thank you. That yeah. was exactly what I was That's what I he was, was thinking. Doing. So, And it's true. I mean, I, I, if, you, if you roster a Jet, I'm sorry. You expected this year to be different. Yeah, I mean, uh, Brees Hall. They, they did. Brees Hall has been okay. Yeah, talk Wilson's about been talk okay. about the Brees Hall numbers you just shared with me in the studio. Yeah, so Brees Hall over the last five weeks. Okay, he's a full time player. He's getting all the workload, tons of carries. In fact, over the last five weeks, he's had sixty three carries. That has amounted to one hundred and fifty seven total rushing yards. One hundred and fifty seven yards would be a really good number for a game. This is how much he's put up over five weeks. 31 Five a week. games played, running at two and a half. A carry, they lose. Uh, Beckton on the offensive line now. It's only getting worse. Thankfully, I mean, you, you see his explosiveness. You see his athleticism. He's still getting it done. During that stretch, he's been an RB1 three of those five weeks. So he's fine. He's just getting it done in the receiving game. But when you watch him get a carry and have absolutely no chance – on this great earth to have any opportunity for success. I mean, it's just that this offensive line is a a real problem. And when you and when you've got Zach Wilson, you're begging you're begging the Jets like, please throw on me. When when Brees scored through the air in this game, it was their first touchdown in forty offensive possessions. It's it's unacceptable to have that quarterback back there if you can't score with him. I don't know if you knew this, but you and I tweeted 30 seconds apart our own independent condemnation of the Jets playing Zach Wilson. I did not know that. So we must have had the same moment where it hit. I mean, and it hits a lot. Mm -hmm. But the same moment where it dripped over the edge and we were like, this is just not acceptable. This is not fair to your fans. This is not fair to your the teammates. This is not fair to the organization. I'm not, I'm not sure, Mike, that... I, just, I don't think Robert Sala, Robert Sala might not be the guy for this job. Ah. If you can't make those decisions, well, but what, what and you lose the locker room every year. Yeah, but what decision was he supposed to make? Like he's not the GM. Any other? Well, they decision. did. I mean, they they gave us a little glimpse there. I mean, uh, Boyle got a fourth quarter, and that's I mean that's when we got Garrett Wilson finally got a catch, and then subsequently. Fumbled it so he could finish with just don't throw him the ball. <laughs> like it would have been so much better if he had just not caught that one pass and ends up with negative yards. I that's I, I I don't I don't know what to make of the coaching because the GM has not supplied Sala with another competent option. Like when Aaron Rodgers goes down in week one, totally understand we're gonna rally behind Zach Wilson. We made him the number two overall pick just a year ago. Let's find out if the kid has anything. But as the management, you need to go, don't tell Zach, but we're going to see if there's a backup plan just in case this doesn't work out. I mean, this is not uh, – yes, he's not responsible for every personnel move, but he could push for them. He's also responsible if you're stuck with a hot turd behind center of manufacturing some sort of offensive – uh, manipulation to score more than once every 40 offensive possessions, in my opinion. And, um, you know, Dobbs was out there. He was clearly available. Mm -hmm. I mean, Joshua Dobbs running the Jets right now, they're a totally different team. 
Yeah, but they Joshua Dobbs was not he he was not part of the, like Aaron Rodgers was still the plan when Josh Dobbs was traded to the Cardinals. Uh, did, did you anybody saying, no, remember oh, Josh Dobbs getting I, traded to the was, Vikings last sorry, week? I was I was still in the beginning of the year. No, I talking about now. I'm talking gotcha. about yeah, yeah, yeah. Carson Wentz Car was uh, available. Car Carson Wentz. Jameis yes. Winston was available. Jacoby Brissett was available. Um, you know this whole it, it, this whole illusion that Aaron Rodgers is coming back might play into the whole thing it because could. The, Aaron Rodgers is not coming back. People, I'm going to say it right now. He's not coming back. You're saying this season. This season. He will come back next year, and they will. there's rumors of them trading for Devontae Adams now, like strong rumors, like people, com sources saying it's happening, like it's a done deal. But not this season. You don't come back at 6-10 and 10 off an Achilles and ruin next year if you re-injure it. And uh, I mean, speaking of coaching, I will throw it out. I know that Aaron Rodgers has defended this man uh, passionately, but this is now two years where a Nathaniel Hackett offense – Looks like absolute crap. And now look look at the Broncos now. Like the Broncos team, the personnel of this team compared to last year, not, it's not a wasn't an overhaul. And they're doing way, 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 way better yeah, than, the, than they were last year. The Jets are converting twenty two point nine percent of their third downs. That is the lowest ever for an NFL team. the lowest ever. It's yeah, the lowest ever. And that's that's a tough one, right? With the quarterback and then obviously Sean Payton came into Denver and it wasn't, you know. Yeah, it, it's uh what a run by Denver right now. I mean, there's a lot to talk about. Let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. I mean, at this point, Zach Wilson is sacking himself. Have you seen some of these? Some some of the times, he just goes down. Like when he was uh, backpedaling? Well, that, <laughs> and that was running onto the field. But, yeah, Cooper Cup. Uh, yeah. This is uh, the season you feared. I mean, a right ankle injury for Cooper Cup. It's not a high ankle. Um, I uh, Same ankle he had surgery on last year. It's a little too early to know. You know, they're going to they're gonna have more information as the week goes on. The earliest reports I saw expect like one missed week, but TBD. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, sad because confidence is now in question, even moving forward when you have an ankle and when you've hurt it twice or you've hurt ankles twice. Uh, Devon A-Chan, mm. he pulled the Simpsons meme. Yes, he did. <laughs> he walked in. He said, what's up? Then he turned around and walked out. And uh, it's the same knee. I can't imagine that Devon H. And, and let me ask your opinion. Does he have fantasy relevance the rest of the year at all I, for, for the fantasy playoffs? I do think he will have fantasy relevance in the playoffs. Um, he was he was back on the sideline, questionable to return. So he wasn't ruled out. I don't think this was um, a mass. I mean, he obviously hurt the knee that was hurting. And so – whether they keep him away from games, whether they have him play in a sleeve, whether, you know, we we don't know yet. We're going to know more information soon. But I don't believe this is some kind of season ender for him. And when he gets back out there, uh, I you know, I, there's, there's every reason to believe when he gets back out there, if he doesn't get injured, he will be good. Obviously, there's uh, huge question marks on injury. He was injured in camp. Uh, injured early in the season, went to IR with this, came back and injured again, and, and part of the issue in drafting uh, Devon Achan was his size. You know, will he be able to withstand uh, the beating of NFL players at his size? And so far the answer has been a resounding nope. My biggest concern here is you missed, what, four, four or five weeks? Uh, five because they had the bye. So you miss five weeks with this injury, and obviously, you know, maybe it's a tweak and it's a two-week thing. I can't imagine he just comes back this week and plays, but maybe we'll pay attention. Um, clearly wasn't ready, right? I mean, wasn't ready to be back out there. Well, yep, that would seem so. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers left early with a Aaron left. Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones left early with a left knee injury. It, when he was carted off, towel over the head it looked really really serious um thankfully the the early reports before the MRI seem like it's not a season ender so this is something where um you're probably going to miss a couple weeks 
and maybe avoid the IR. MRI today to determine the extent of the injury could be an MCL sprain. When you look at it, though, this season's pretty much a lost season for Aaron Jones at this point. He, he was the number one running back in football in week one. But the good old days. <laughs> uh but that was really just two touchdowns, right? Forty one yards rushing on nine carries. He had a big breakaway. Yeah. Was that a reception? Yeah, and then like he That's had a good, he, got hurt. he had a good game two weeks ago. But I mean for the most part, now you're gonna miss some weeks for sure. Um It's what are the Packers gonna do? I think probably they're just gonna move on from, from everybody. That's what I mean. Like this could be a full house yeah. clear. Full rebuild. Kenneth Walker. Left the first half with an oblique injury, didn't return. Matthew Bet said it's usually a one to two week thing. Seahawks play on Thanksgiving. Expect that to be the Zach Charbonnet show uh, against the Forty uh, Niners defense yeah. that is not fun to play against. The quote from Pete Carroll was, "It was legit. Yeah, <laughs> not the fake. Legit injury. It was legit. It was too legit, so he had to quit. Yeah, yeah. Um, Geno Smith is uh, unsure of whether he could play on on Thanksgiving, yeah. so." Um, I think I'll be out there. Dude, what is happening? With injuries? What To quarterbacks specifically, what is happening? I think what's happened is they've protected them so well. That they're all th fragile? No they're all fragile. No, no calluses? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Their bones are weak. <laughs> they haven't been hit. You know, there, there's a pretty... I mean, I, look, I don't know the science behind it, and I'm sure every doctor is doing what they think is best for these teams and the adjustments, but... I do shake my head sometimes and wonder about the – it's like they used to practice a lot more, and they used to practice and hit each other, and they used to practice in pads, and there weren't limits on all of that stuff. And so – and that's all for player safety. But you do have like this this disproportionately large amount of injuries that have transpired. And, you know, I think there are a lot of things the NFL can do, get rid of turf for one. But, um yeah, I I just I I think there's a little seed of truth in what you're saying as a joke. Right. Yeah. It, I think it if is you're mostly not, a joke that they have become fragile, but uh, <laughs> you know you're not used to you're not used to some of these these hits. Uh, Deontay Foreman left early with an ankle injury. Ugh. He did score. Yep. Darius Slayton had a big game, then exited with an arm injury, was ruled out immediately. Uh, Bill O'Brien. Patriots offensive coordinator basically said that, uh, well, Bill's going to make a decision, the other Bill, on their quarterback for week 12. It's undecided right now, as are the Jets quarterback, as is the Jets quarterback situation. Which, thank goodness, thank goodness, thank goodness, because this is the first time that it's been undecided for the Jets. It has been a resounding smash the podium. Zach Wilson is our guy every single week. Uh, leading up to now, now at least they're saying we have to consider it. Yeah, that's so that the locker room doesn't burn it down. The The fury when you play defense at the level that they're capable of playing at. Yeah, it's usually – body slamming Stephon Dix. Yeah, I mean, it's usually <clears throat> the defenses that are angry when they're playing well and the offense can't – I have to imagine the offensive guys are now also ready to burn the locker room down. Like, I would like to be able to receive a target that, that gets to me. And, uh, I mean, there's there's no way people can be supporting him playing quarterback unless you are a Bills fan or a, you know. It, you have a lot of Zach Wilson rookie cards in your stash. Right. There's There's got to be have. some nefarious reason to support Zach Wilson at this point. That was today's News and Notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break, back with the studs. Did you get to watch much of the football yesterday, Mike? I did. I watched uh, quite a large amount of it. Yeah, and uh, you had several injuries. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The uh, Through this weekend, uh, let's see, lost Mark Andrews Thursday night, so that – that that tanked the league of record. More yeah, you than, sold right away. More than likely. Um, and then Dynasty lost Joe Burrow, which means I lost Jamar Chase, and then I lost Ken Walker. So it's going great. Had a nice day. It's great. Anything else you want to get off your chest? Uh, you want to predict any injuries for this week and what you're expecting to I happen? I can read off my roster. Mm, <laughs> mm. All right, let's jump into the studs, talk about some good stuff. 
NFL Studs of the Week, presented by NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV. I think Trevor Lawrence heard us talking about him. <laughs> yeah, he had a he had himself a fine performance. Four touchdowns, two through the air, two on the ground, and finally people stopped starting him. <laughs> Pulling a little Gabe Davis uh, reverse situation. Started in just forty five percent of sleeper leagues this week. This is week eleven, right? Yes. So this is his first twenty plus point fantasy game I mean, he's, since he, week fifteen of last year, Mike. He took Travis Etienne's touchdowns, so this <laughs> the, it bounced back to him. Is this a Zay Jones situation it, where I mean, we, the, we the the difference of Zay Jones being there for Calvin Ridley yes. and for Christian Kirk? Like when when I heard Zay Jones was back, I was very disappointed I had Christian Kirk in my DraftKings lineup because I was like I I was uh, I was a little bit surprised at the Zay Jones being out there, but it seems to open things up for the offense as a whole, but it it changes what how they play. Yes, it changes how they utilize Calvin Ridley. So, I mean, Calvin Ridley, a monster game as well. Two touchdowns, yeah. Yep. Brock Purdy, perfect game, passer rating-wise. He also had, uh, what, uh, three touchdowns through the air? Mm -hmm. We knew it was going to be good. This was real good. Jason started the week. Hurrah. He's been... <laughs> I was a combo. I wanted to go hooray, but I said hurrah, and I said it really sad. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, hold on. It would have been fun. Hold on. Hold on. Brock Purdy, Jason, start of the week. Yeah, baby. Yeah, there it is. You can, <laughs> hurrah is a. It is not a, when it's said the way I said. Right. It. No, no, no. You said hurrah. <laughs> I said it the way like when they're like your taxes are due. Hurrah! Hurrah! hurrah. Yeah. Justin Herbert, uh, two sixty and two seventy three rushing yards, tons of design runs. And should have should have been like three thirty and three, if not for Quentin Johnston, who got separation. Yeah, he was open. And separ he separated his hands as well. Guys, he's and, never open. And the ball went <laughs> that, through. That's his trick. No matter how <laughs> open you think I am, I still won't catch the ball. And also a shout out to him uh for <laughs> dropping that play because my league of record season completely over if he just catches the ball he should have caught. I mean, it was a it was a wide open 70 yard. Not wide open, but going down the sideline. Decent chance of scoring. I, I I don't see how he doesn't score if he just reels that ball and he's faster than the defender and there was no one else there to catch him. He but could have fallen down. Still. Thankfully, he decided to kick the ball with his knee and <laughs> punt that ball away. It was uh Kyle makes a good point cuz I noticed the same thing. Not that I really have an excuse for him in that situation. But they were in comeback mode, and I I was watching every play wa watching Quentin Johnston, and that was it was fly after fly after fly after fly like he had run wind sprints for about two possessions, and uh, clearly gassed and uh, didn't didn't catch the ball. Lamar Jackson had the big Thursday night game. Tommy DeVito big game two forty six <laughs> and three. Dude, um, how how do the Washington? I mean, how do they how do they have jobs? How do you lose to this Giants team? How? Well, I mean, uh, like you, you could give the Jets all with, like we open with just just dumping on the Jets. How does Washington lose to Tommy DeVito? It was, and not just it, lose to him two forty six and three. Well, yeah, I was gonna say he was and he, he was good. He was the he's the quarterback seven right now. He was eighteen for twenty six, sixty nine percent completion. You know, uh, and, and he's awful. he didn't even run, and he's awful. Like like Danny DeVito is <laughs> no Tommy DeVito this week. He was Tommy DeVito. He, he was Danny in the first quarter because he got sacked five times in a quarter, but he earned Tommy for the rest of the game. All, all I know is when I see this, when I see that Tommy Danny oh, DeVito yeah, yeah. threw for yeah, two hundred and forty six yeah. of three touchdowns. Yeah. yeah, I know where you're going. You know exactly. Yeah, where I know I'm where going. you're going. I'm going a Week Twelve matchup against you, Andy, in that Dak CD stack. <laughs> Against these Manders, hit that key again, oh, Brooks. Oh man, key There's just no way. There's, I would sell I, you if can, I were you. You can pinch the rest of your team. It's just Dak and CD are going to together put up 150. It's going to be a real tough week emotionally for this for this company. Yeah, because Jason is. I thought Jason was turning a corner oh. on his ability to handle fantasy football. I really did. Thank this you. past week, I proved you wrong. And then yesterday, that. I mean, from the first. 
I, you know it's going to be a bad weekend when Jason, like, one of my guys has, like, a three-yard play, and he's like, oh, no. And I'm like, I know the rest of the day is going to be bad because if you care about, like, a three-yard run by my Saquon, when I'm not even playing you. I genuinely. Can you imagine if I had played you yesterday? I, you know, I mean. Yeah. Uh, he wouldn't have been at the studio. He I, would have been gone in the first half of the game. I had 109 points on my team. Your team had nine. Uh, yeah. He had nine points in the first half of the game. He would have left. You uh, might have run into traffic. I genuinely don't believe that I can be here in the studio this week for this matchup. He can't. Ha this guy. He's going backwards. He's going back. <laughs> this guy. Fantasy should be. We should be in here and we should be hooping and hollering. Yeah. No. Not like my world is over. All right, that's that's what I hope happens this week. Dude, I'm, I like, hope we just have a fun, playful rivalry that I win every time this week, and that my players stand up. You're gonna after like yeah. doing anything. They can not even get get a get up from a play as long as they stand up. Oh man, I'm gonna be so pumped. Guess it'll be me and you this weekend, Mike. <laughs> Josh Allen ended up with a big game against the Jets, two seventy five and three. Uh, did you guys see that Ty Johnson run in that game? Oh yes, yeah. against his old team. It yeah. we're in twenty six. You know, seeing a running back coming up the sideline, shades of Devin Singletary. The uh, the, the coaching staff up there in the offensive play line, they were pumped, man. Pumped. Hey, look, if you had anybody but – like, I can't believe that worked. Yeah, and they didn't use Gabe Davis again. <laughs> so we'll talk about him later. Yeah. Kyler Murray. Uh, Jason, you, your thoughts on the Kyler game? Uh, so Kyler ended up with a good fantasy game. Thankfully, he had 51 yards and a rushing touchdown, uh, a, a passing touchdown. But I was I was pretty disappointed with the overall play. Uh, he had opportunities to do so much more. Um, I believe there were three interceptions from the Cardinals in that game, and yeah. the the scoring opportunities, the the time of possession, just the he left a lot out on the field and and even though it was fine for fantasy and this is hey that's great this is great news if this is like a baseline right like his rushing ability his health everything looks good but something was a little off whether it's rust or uh maybe I'm not giving enough credit to the Texans defense and it was their doing but I believe that he is not playing as good as he should um I, now whether that means bad things are ahead because he's just not playing great or whether that's hey look he had a great fantasy performance and he wasn't playing good if he figures out you know how to connect with Hollywood Brown again um you know does that mean that his fantasy production coming into the fantasy playoffs is even better than this baseline it should be it's his second game in this offense yeah I mean my my view on Kyler was that you just can't come back without some rust after missing that much time and it's not meant good things for Hollywood so far. No. You know, Hollywood's had two complete – I mean, Jason, this morning you're saying, do I bench him? Yeah, I mean – That'll be, be a discussion for this week. I'm going to be looking at Josh Downs or Hollywood this week, and that feels like something I didn't want to have to look at. Justin Fields came back, 16 for 23, 169 and 1, 104 rushing yards for Josh. An incredible meltdown at the end of the game. Oh, by the yeah. Bear, by the Bears. Well, I believe they were up uh, 12. 13 points with four minutes left. Yeah, that's... Hey. They found a way to get it done. Yeah, they did. That one... NFL needs to look in, <laughs> look into that one. They're like, well, I mean, why? Their pick goes to the Carolina Panthers, right? Oh, no, wait. It's the no. other way around. No. Like, oh, yeah. Now the, I see what you're saying. The Bears... The, I believe the Bears have the number one pick. Like, their own pick is now number one. Really? I think no, so. I don't think so. I think that's got to be Carolina. Or is that just odds? They have three wins, don't they? Yeah. The, the, oh, is that the Carolina yeah, one? Yeah, that's okay. the Carolina Okay, the Carolina yeah, one. See, I All was right, flipping okay. them, too. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Number one running back on the week, Saquon Barkley. Oh, man. Yeah. 14 for 83 on the ground. So. By the way, he's been uh, in this Tommy DeVito insulted offense. Let me read you his yards per carry the last three weeks. 5.6, 5.1. 5.9 also had 57 receiving yards and two touchdowns yeah yeah uh, he was he was absolutely outstanding and what was crazy is uh, two of the um big touchdown throws were to Saquon uh, they were using him downfield this wasn't a screen pass that Saquon took 30 yards this was you know a, a 
20 air yard target into the end zone. I think they're like, well, if we don't have wide receivers that are good, let's just use Saquon as a wide receiver, and and it worked. He's been great. Uh, Mike, I think you missed it on this last week, but we were looking at the playoff primer. The, oh, the I schedule know Barkley's between schedule. Eckler, yeah, and Barkley. Yeah. I know you, you had made some decisions to move away from Barkley because of that schedule uh, in our Dynasty League, and so Andy offered me. I don't know if you're aware of the offer I turned down this last okay. week. He offered me Saquon. Live on the air. Saquon and two twos. Wow. For Eckler. And I struggled with that and I turned it down. And now this morning, I offered him <laughs> Just Eckler a for a two and a three. So it's an even better deal for Andy. Yeah, he's, he's, he, we play each other this week. I don't think he's thrilled with the fact that Austin Eckler looked like uh, Mike Tolbert out there. Yeah. This week. Um, I mean, I'm not joking. There were multiple times we watched Austin Eckler, and we were like, "Is that Eckler or is that a fullback?" Like That's the, the new the game. Play where he you want to play fell a game? Down? The, uh, oh, that, the play that he fell one down was funny, was a, but not. It yeah. was actually the play where he had a, a really nice run. Uh, read the hole right, bounced it outside nicely, and then and then had no breakaway speed, which we have seen from him earlier. So, uh, I don't know. I also, haven't the seen least anything about injury. he's had in a long time. Yeah, there. Th that was a weird game in the sense that they just kept throwing the ball. He was out there, and they just Herbert. Not to him, though. No, no, no. But Herbert just was. It, uh, Herbert was running a lot, but I'm just saying, like, they would it was snap weird. back and plays where you should be handing the ball off against a beatable Packers run rush defense. They decided, nah, I'm not going to do that. So Taquan is getting so much work. That's the beautiful thing about Saquon. And he generally, even in the you know later in the Dallas game, I think he had negative three yards in that game. He had some big runs in the second half and managed over five a carry against Dallas. I know the matchups aren't great, but when you're playing every snap in the entire game, I mean, we're talking about the Brees Hall situation. Like, Saquon's playing every snap in the same vein, and normally it works out. Jalen Warren, also known as the new Austin Eckler with Juice. Nine for one twenty nine at a seventy something yard run, three targets. Another great game from Jalen Warren. Yeah, I mean, it it was really all on the back of that seventy four yard touchdown, but this is a player who can do that and can do that against the Browns. I, I don't mm -hmm. imagine many people were playing Jalen Warren because of how bad the matchup was, but if you did, you got uh you were blessed. Gus Bus, two touchdowns, uh on you know, and he's playing a Chargers team that literally can't stop. They can't stop the run, so he's going to score more. Christian McCaffrey doing McCaffrey stuff. Uh, another touchdown. Nothing wrong with his schedule. Not nothing you're going to worry about. This was a really, really tough matchup for him, and so it just makes you realize that doesn't exist. It does not exist for Christian McCaffrey. Devin Singletary, another 100-yard game, another Dude. touchdown. 22 for 112 against Arizona as Jacksonville this week. I expect Damian Pierce to be back. He rejoined practice on Friday before being ruled out. I don't think he was ruled out due to a setback. I think it was just a matter of not having enough practice time in. So, How do you stop the heater, though, uh, if you, you're Houston? Yeah, I mean, I, I would play Singletary over Pierce whatever week Pierce comes back, but – you know, it's going to be – I mean, their, their offensive coordinator came out and said it's going to be the same thing as before Pierce, le Pierce left. So, you know, I don't I don't know if Singletary can be a league winner with Pierce as part of the backfield. Yeah, I, I, I don't think he will be a league winner. You hope, though, that Houston – I mean, Singletary has just played significantly better than Pierce did, and you hope that they can make that transition to say, hey – He's giving us a better chance to win because this is a team now playoff bound. The Houston Texans are six and four. Six and four. They are looking to be their best win games, make the playoffs, start the career of CJ Stroud out, you know, off the right way. And Singletary gives them a better chance every time he's out there than than Pierce does. Uh Jameer Gibbs. We did it again. Six for fifty nine through the air. Another touchdown. So the streak continues. Montgomery. The late game winner on the ground. Also, you know, great yards per carry again. Both players every week, including seems, seems so, including Green Bay on Thanksgiving. Oh, that'll be a great matchup. Joe Mixon had another big week. He's been very good. Where are we adjusting Joe Mixon in light of the injury to Joe Burrow? 
I would imagine he sees an uptick in work, uh, but a decline in offense. But he's he's still in every week play until we see something else. James Cook, 17 for 73 on the ground. Most important uh, for James Cook was he was involved a little bit in the in the red zone a little bit more. This was a different it's offensive. It's a trap. <laughs> Well, it was a different offensive coordinator. That's true. That is true. So, I don't know. I'm hopeful. Well, Ty Johnson got involved immediately with yeah. the new offensive coordinator as well, so that'll be something to monitor. Brian Robinson, 7 for 58 through the air, was a monster. Uh, 17 for 73 on the ground, another big game for him. Tony Pollard got into the end zone. He did it. I think he was uh, the tackle that he got into the end zone, it began on about the 10 Yeah. and then ran through people. He's like, I yeah. need it. Yeah. And they were, keep talking about me not scoring. There were so many flags on that play. I can't believe that none of them was was an offensive hold. I saw the play and I just assumed, oh, that's that's coming back. But uh, it was a good run. Now he's playing against Washington and Seattle. Good matchups. I am not bullish at all on him. I I I, I think this is where you sell high off of the touchdown and the upcoming schedule. Brees Hall. Five for 50 and a touchdown through the air, salvaging that was a it. day. That was it. We don't need to talk about the running stats. The running the 10 for 23. No, yeah, what? no, no. Uh, Calvin Ridley, huge game. Seven for 103 and two. I think a lot of people out there are like, man, he was on my bench. Why didn't you tell me to play him? I, I'm sorry. Because we didn't know that Zay Jones was going to play. Yeah, I mean, even, even with Zay Jones playing, I don't think I would have had the confidence to say, hey, that one time earlier in the year when Zay Jones played, he was good. Uh, now I might, but, <laughs> but I mean, you just go with what you've had. The are he was the wide receiver, 59, 89, 30 and 69. Not nice. Not nice. Tyree kale, 10 for one forty six, Unstoppable. Does play the jets on black Friday. Don't care. You play yeah. him tank Dell. Goodness gracious. Man. Tank Dell, 10 for one forty nine and one. This is the third consecutive week that tank Dell has double digit targets. Is uh, not that you uh, would find this to be a reasonable sample size, but if you were to take the last three games of Tank Dell and stretch it out over a season, that'd be 200 targets, 1,800 yards, and 23 touchdowns. So he's on a bit of a heater. He's a rookie superstar, and that's how you need to view him. He did not have the first-round draft capital that Zay Jones and Quentin Johnston and Jordan Addison and Jackson Smith and Jigba had, but he, this is a rookie who had the production that those guys had. He he had more production in college than those guys. To come out and in his rookie year flash this well, you have to you have to buy in. You have to be in. The combination of CJ Stroud and Tank Dell is going to be a long term future star connection here. Now, um there has been some injuries to Nico Collins during this stretch. Then once he comes back, Noah Brown leaves. So I don't Obviously, this three-game sample, he's not going to be an 1,800-yard, 23-touchdown type of player, and the matchups have been really good. But what he has shown on the field is really important to buy into um, early. I mean, I bought it. I bought in and went to trade for him because I thought he could be a league winner, and apparently Andy had that idea before me. You know, it was tough this week because I had the chance, I thought, to go aggressively try to pick up Stephon Diggs for the stretch run or stick with Tank Dell. And... um I originally made an offer including Tank Dell and I retracted that and then I just looked at it and I said, you know, it was just like bye weeks really matter right now. That's one thing I want to throw out there because like if you're navigating yeah. getting to the finish, like week 13 is, is brutal. It's, it's ridiculous. Week 13 is an absolute huge problem. Diggs is on by that week along yep. with Devontae Adams, along with Saquon, along uh, with Vikings, Vikings the and, Ravens. Yeah, I mean, it's a... Week 13, when you're fighting for the playoffs, is a big problem. And the idea of trading a guy past his bye for a guy with a bye, if you can't afford to do it, that has to be factored in. Brandon Ayuk, oh, do we have three straight start of the weeks that are delivering nice. here? Tank Dell, Brandon Ayuk, um, six for – or five for 156 and one. He's He's been an absolute – like he's number one in yards per catch. And it's not hard to watch what happens. They just run it with – they run it, run it, underneath, underneath – Play action, Ayuk for twenty five. I mean, they just do it over and over again. But he had a seventy. He had the longest reception for a touchdown this year of any player. That's the longest one. Yeah, that's sad. I think it's seventy six <laughs> yards, seventy three yards. I mean, that that's a that's a fantastic touchdown. But at this, well, that's what they said weeks, on the broadcast. Uh, so 10 I'm going to blame it on the broadcast if they're wrong. Uh, Mike, by the way, 
I don't know if you knew this or if you paid attention, but I did survive the turkey for the Wheel of Shame. I did not get Wheel of Shame the third straight week. Yes. Mm. Because because Brees Hall didn't get played. Because <laughs> Brees Hall didn't get played. Well, I lost Cooper Cup. <laughs> yeah. And I thought I was. I, I thought fair. it's over. That's fair. And then uh, luckily I snuck by, so I was getting real nervous. Yep. No, I'm. I get to. I get to do it on the. Mega the only dog. reason I thought about that is I chose to save a little cash on Debo, and you guys both went Ayuk, and that was a bad decision. Keenan Allen, sixteen targets, ten for one, sixteen and one. When all your other receivers are injured or can't catch, Keenan is going to be a machine. Nin. Yep. <laughs> DJ Moore, nine targets, seven is that a for Keenan machine and joke. <laughs> It's it's really not. Boston. It's really not. I I whispered it. You're not supposed to respond. Um, it was good to see an Oh, I do have breaking news. The oh. the Shakir uh, touchdown that happened a little bit later passed Brandon Ayuk's 76 yard ah, touchdown. There we go. So that's now the longest at 81. Are you happy with 81? I'll accept that. Yeah. Um, DJ Moore. Now that Justin Fields is back. Really, really nice to see this uh, because DJ Moore was on a heater with Justin Fields before the injury. That seems like the new phrase right and now. You, yeah, it, it is. It's and fun you, to say. You wanted to. You wanted it to be true. You know, you wanted him to uh, Fields to come back and be like, "Oh yeah, Fields is good. DJ Moore is good, and he's going to target him a lot." And that's what happened. So you, you it's it's great news for uh, Chicago Bears fans, Chicago Bears managers. And DJ Moore managers. Well, we knew DK Metcalf would break out eventually if he got healthy. Five for 94 and a touchdown. Looked to the part for the first time in a while. Amon Ross St. double digits. Uh, every game this entire season he's played, mm -hmm. he has been in double digits. Eight for 77 and a touchdown. You know, he's not the downfield guy, but he sure as heck fills the stat sheet. He is so, so good. He's just unstoppable. I mean, if you look at his season – He's just he he is dominant every single week. There's there's no downside to playing him. No schedule, no worries. He's just uh, I mean, he is he is a young Keenan Allen. And Keenan Allen is dominating but still not as good as Amon Ra. Well, I think you said something kind of important there, which is that you don't need to worry about matchups. Like if you go look at like, he was the number seven wide receiver on the week with 19 targets against Baltimore, right? Like, this it, 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 back in week seven. Like, it, it doesn't matter. Tougher matchups might be better for him. Right. Because it's like they need the pass rushes there. Him. And, yeah. Yeah. So, he's he's very kind of invulnerable to a bad game, which is rare for a player. Um, shout out to Jaden Reed. The oh, best yeah. Packer wide receiver. <laughs> uh, once again, looked the part. Uh, this time, he scored on the ground. Uh, contributed through the air. Say so the the Packers wide receivers as a whole had a had a pretty good day. Yeah, that's if you true. played any Wicks, of the three, you would have been no, four. Wicks had yeah. a decent yeah, day. He did. Dobbs had, had, a uh, had a touchdown. Watson had a touchdown. Whoa, I love, I love Michael, Michael Keaton. Keaton. Puka Nakua was shut out until the last moments of the first half, but then with Cooper Cup going down, he's back, baby. Five for seventy and a touchdown. Seven plus targets in every single game. He just finds a way to get it done. Um, I am not thrilled that he plays Arizona next week because I I, I have to play Jason yeah. and Cortland Sutton can't stop scoring. I do. It's not fair. It is not fair. The, Where the, was this last year? The do you meme, know how many? The meme of he can't keep getting away <laughs> with it. Like, and they're five and five now and good. <sighs> so like, the offense isn't bad. It's okay now. Although Javante, we'll talk about, but you know, scored again. Uh, there's one wide receiver in the NFL with more touchdowns than Cortland Sutton. Mm -hmm. His name's Tyreek Hill. Crazy. Since Two. since heaters is uh, the, the, yeah, the, we got another heater. We got we got George Kittle, who oh. has been the tight end one in total points. He is on a heater. Um, thanks, Mike. Uh, no, he's he's legitimately like been absolutely on yeah. fire. I mean, uh, number eight, number three, number two, number one. Can't go higher than one though. But he's been great. Uh oh, does that mean he has to reset? I guess because oh, he was three and then yeah. two and then one. Now he's got to go back down to like eighteen or something. Kelsey could still pass him tonight and fix that problem. But George Kittle's been very, very good. That's that's kind of the end of the tight ends. I mean, we didn't have anybody. <laughs> nope. Stone Smart, Stone Smart, Josh Oliver. 
Now, what if I told you David Njoku had 15 targets yeah. with Dorian I, Thompson Robinson? I think that's worth discussing. 15 targets is um, – that's a lot of targets. That's a lot of targets to end up with 56 total yards. But hey. those those are the targets that Dorian Thompson Robinson is able to throw. Like, they're, they're short. They're screens. They're three yards down the field. When you watch him target Amari Cooper and he's throwing it 20 yards down the field, Cooper's got no chance at that ball because it's not near him. It, it, just so many bad targets to Amari Cooper. The targets that go to Najoku are – catchable because they're close he is an explosive violent runner after the catch too like he he's definitely in play right now um thanks again to our sponsor nfl sunday ticket on youtube and youtube tv with nfl sunday ticket it's never been easier to keep up with all your fantasy players watch the rest of this nfl season for half the price at 174 when you bundle with youtube tv sign up at youtube.com slash fantasy footballers terms and embargoes apply no refunds moving on Pooped in his big boy pants. Well, we had uh, underwhelming games. There weren't huge quarterback duds this week. That's why you got a Jared Goffel, Mike, because he had three interceptions, uh, two two touchdowns, but three picks. Sounds a so, lot like C.J. Stroud. Three thirty-six and two with three. I mean, maybe no duds this week, Dan. It's funny because uh, I mean, at least this is our league scoring, so you I know, mean, just a couple little bit things different but Jared Goff had 20.2 and Tua had 24.6 yeah I mean that's not great from Tua either but well, but I'm saying like that's I think against Chicago you'd hope you would get in the yes. top 12 you would you hope did, you would not and, throw three nasty interceptions those was, those were nasty it was crazy I mean Jared Goff's been so good this year especially at home against a weak defense it was like what what happened yeah I know one of the balls. Well, Laporta has been bad now for a couple weeks. Yeah, something. You know, you get Jameson Williams running around out there. Everyone gets confused. <laughs> C.J. Stroud was great. This is stupid to have yeah. him in here. <laughs> he was. He was. He wasn't great. He was super great. He just had uh, some ugly interceptions. But um, yeah, there weren't really any quarterback duds this week of nah. people you counted on. Yeah, not the same well, for the running back position. I mean, Burrow. Sure. Sure. I mean, Do you I just, have more to say? Are you mad at him? I just wish he would have gutted it out. Here, here's the truth, and I know people are making a big – there's like uh, Portnoy and them are making a big deal out of it, uh, probably for notoriety's sake. But Oh, the, yeah. Okay. The fact that like he had an injury that wasn't disclosed, and the NFL has to – he they have to crush Cincinnati for that. Crush them. Because you're you're out here proliferating sports betting, sports betting, sports betting. We talk about it. Everybody talks about it. There's books going everywhere. You have major segments sponsored by sports betters or sports betting right uh, books companies. Yeah, and then you don't tell the public of an injury, and then people put huge money down on players. Like that is a major issue. Like if I was the NFL, I would be that would be a monstrous penalty, like a pick or they've, something. They've been looking into it, though, and I, I believe that despite the fact that it was a compression sleeve on the wrist, it was a completely different injury. So, t I mean, TBD, they are looking into it, but I, I don't think it was a re-aggravation of, uh, of something that he had pre-existing. Austin Eckler was real bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two for six through the air, fumbled after he fell down. Was he was 10 for 64 on the ground yeah. and looked like he, he he was running about a 6 240. I, I don't know what was going on in this game. Jason was constantly worried that he was injured. Um, I'm worried. That's why I haven't clicked accept on any trades. I wondered. He's sitting over there. Well, I'm just letting you. I'm just letting you. Stew. Stew. I'm, <laughs> I almost canceled it because I yeah, forgot I'm sure about you the did. week 13 I'm bye. For, sure you did. For uh, Saquon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's a thought. Travis Etienne, fourteen for fifty-two. Uh, I feel a little bit validated in the Travis Etienne thing because I kept saying it, it was the you can't keep getting away with it. Like the yeah. the touchdowns for Travis Etienne were out of this world and not going to keep happening. The last two weeks, it's been pretty bad. He had a really tough matchup against Kansas City early in the year. wasn't good in that game. Mm -hmm. The matchups were just beautiful for a long run Houston Atlanta Buffalo Indianapolis who's the worst New Orleans okay that one's kind of tough but he got bailed out by I think a, a, a two, reception two touchdowns in there oh two yeah okay so that was good but um 
his you up, know his upcoming schedule is a real problem too. He's got Houston this week, which is great. Yeah, he'll get two more touchdowns. But after that, the stretch run, including the fantasy playoffs, you're Ew. Talk, yeah, you're talking about weeks 14, 15, and sixteen against Cleveland, one of the most difficult, Baltimore, one of the most difficult, and Tampa Bay, one of the most difficult run defenses. So, two of those on the road. Yeah, it's uh, he he doesn't look like a playoff superstar. So but, the reason he's not on my league of record team right now. And that's why, because mm-hmm. Travis Etienne is a monster, but you have really tough matchups, and that's hard. Uh, Derrick Henry, ten for thirty-eight. You know, I I'm, I'm worried about this. I really last week we talked about this big trade that Josh did for Derrick Henry. Um, the playoff schedule is great, but I mentioned on the show the, you have four weeks to get there. The rest of the schedule is great, like. But then, I mean, we got Carolina, and then we got Indianapolis. Yeah, next I mean, two weeks. that's what I'm saying. The, from here on out, we I talked about this early in in the week. I was saying maybe let Derrick Henry play this one more difficult matchup against Jacksonville, and then trade for him at this point, because Carolina, Indianapolis, Houston, Seattle, Houston left on the schedule is is great. Now Houston's if, been really good against the run. I'm going to throw that out there. They've been great. Like James, if you looked at the numbers, the James Conner matchup was not good this week. Like Connor underperformed, but if you go look at the last five weeks, they had been really slowing running games down with the Miko Ryans. And my point last week was that if Henry and this team, which Will Levis isn't getting it done right now, they got hammered. If they're out of it and Houston's playing for everything, I just don't think that those are smash matchups. I would agree that the Houston smash ups, as the, I would say. the Houston Texans double up in the playoffs is not going to be as good as it has been in years past because obviously what happens if the Titans get down big is really, really bad for Derrick Henry, which is why the matchup against the Texans has been so good because the Texans aren't good, but now they're good. So yeah, I, 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 I see that point of the two Houston matchups. Well, and, and look, he, he has every ability to dominate for the rest of the season. I just – we're at a point with Derrick Henry where you don't know that is to be sure. Like you don't know that yes, he I can can't give that. you a bad game like he never used to be able to give you a ten for thirty eight game, no matter who the matchup was. It seemed like. So there's just a little bit of trepidation there. Like the wheels are clearly like this is it, right? Derrick Henry's done after this year in Tennessee. Yeah. Which so, is again, why why would you not trade him? Josh so Jacobs, weird. big dud game. Kind of unexpected. You know, he'd been getting twenty plus carries, went fourteen for thirty nine, only one target. That would be something I'd be a little bit one target, two targets about. against the Jets last week, zero the week before. I mean, he dominated the Giants on the ground, but Aiden O'Connell not throwing him the rock. Yeah, Javante Williams, huge disappointment last night. Kind of a problem when you see P. Ryan caught seven of seven targets, which is the second really good performance by P. Ryan in the passing game where he's available to Russell Wilson. Po- possibly that was, I believe, four of them were that final drive. That uh, in which P Ryan gets the two minute, but I mean it was the week before too. I'm just saying like yeah. P Ryan's delivering in the passing game. Like if he was not getting the targets and catching them, I mean, I don't know. It's, sure, they they are using a three headed monster. He only played 49 percent of snaps, and I thought that this honestly, I thought that this week was the week that Javante would kind of secure himself as the RB one workload wise. Did. Were you guys surprised yeah. with 11 for 37? Yeah, yeah. This this looked like it, over the last month he had the second best utilization rate um, and expected fantasy points. So looked I really, really thought that this would be a, a continuation of that, and it wasn't. Now he's got a very difficult Cleveland matchup coming up, so a little bit more trepidation instead of excitement uh, towards Javante. So tell me what's going on with James Conner because it's weird. He's really good. So he he has been 4.4, 4.6 a carry for two weeks. He's had explosive runs, hasn't scored. And um, not, not being involved enough in the passing game. Yeah, just two for one is what it was this week. So, you know, is this a ramp up a bit? He played 69% of snaps. He played 63% the week before. I don't think so. I think this is, I think this is how they want to use him. He's still got the bulk of the carries, the bulk of the snaps. Um, they're not overdoing it. He played well, like you said, 4.6, 4.4. He, he looks good. He's breaking tackles, looks explosive. But if you're not getting touchdowns and you're not getting the, the four or five receptions he's capable of getting in a game, 
which right now this is the first example of the Kyler led this offense with James Conner. I'm now very skeptical that he is going to get back up to the five, six targets uh, a game that we've seen him do in the past. And um, then it then it becomes touchdowns. Like if he doesn't get a touchdown, you're going to be pretty disappointed, even if he's playing well. It, it could just be the offense. In week one, he had five targets, but that was also – that was when Josh Dobbs was just – thrown into the fire uh, on a road game against Washington didn't really know the offense yet but then it was one target two two zero in the in the injury game but I mean this could just be the this is how they want to run the offense seems like a weird way to run the offense ignoring Connor and the, the like going heavy Dorch and leaving Hollywood and Connor off I don't know Dorch was the real man on that catch yeah he did have one nice uh Najee very, very Harris nice d dud game yeah at wide receiver, Gabe Davis, zero targets, zero catches. Uh, Jason, you were you were wrong that this would have been the surprise. Uh, he'll be great against the Jets. Yeah, I mean, that was mostly a joke. It, well, it would have been a surprise. It would have been a shock because the Jets don't give up points to anyone. I think everybody benched Gabe Davis. Any chance that Stephon Diggs isn't 100% right now? Uh, four for 27. The matchup's tough, but Diggs kind of – he overcomes those things traditionally. Two consecutive weeks for Stephon Diggs where he was the wide receiver 56 and 54. And he had the uh, the whole back scare. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, is he, is he 100 percent? I don't know. I think he will be okay. I mean, he's uh, he's out there. You don't expect your best game against the Jets. Sauce Gardner helping to shut him down. You know, next week against the Philadelphia Eagles should be an awesome performance. That will, then, yeah, that'll be telling. Yeah, right into the bye after that, and then on the road against Kansas City the week after. Garrett Wilson, eight targets. He's two, also banged two up. Two for nine. He's banged up, and you are you are really playing the scratchers when you play him. I mean, they if you don't score except for every 40 possessions and you just take touchdowns off the table for Garrett Wilson, you can't get in the top ten. I You in, just can't. I don't want top ten. Or, well, I would love top ten. But I want uh, just like the, the whole month before that, it was he averaged, what, essentially 11, 12. 12-ish points in a half-point scoring format. It was – to go from that to negative points is I – mean, that's that's a that's a work of art. Jalen Waddle, four for 55. 55! I'm not that All worried right. about Jalen Waddle, but I am this week against the Jets. Man, I wish I had C.D. Lamb. <laughs> what are you – are you here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm here. I mean, what's on your screen? Are you just staring at me? I'm looking at Jalen Waddle's uh, stretch run, and he's just not been very good. He's the wide receiver 31 on the course of the season. He did yeah. miss a game in week three. But he's oh, 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 oh. Oh, you, this, you didn't it, understand no. my reference. No. I Well, look, I have CeeDee Lamb, and I just assume everything in your life has revolved around beating me this week. This was because you made the bad decision to trade CeeDee Lamb away in a dynasty a couple of years ago for Jalen Waddle when he was on a quote-unquote heater. This is because <laughs> I was on the show and I turned down that trade uh, of – of uh, I had CeeDee and I was offered Jalen Waddle yeah. and I turned it down. And mm. you two made me feel so dumb mm. and said I was a dummy. And so I went and I took did, that did trade. Did we, Mike? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 You've got your best interest at heart at all times. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Christian Kirk, dud. Yeah. Terry McLaurin, another dud. Jordan Addison, dud. Hollywood Brown, what's – I mean, dude. what were you saying that Kyle keeps bringing up on the Dynasty show? Yeah, I mean, Kyle has been saying for a couple weeks here that, like, the NFL has moved past Hollywood Brown's skill set, that he's a man beater, and the NFL's <laughs> kind of moved to uh, a zone coverage. And specifically, the I, I will say that Houston is – really aggressive in that so it it might have been a bad matchup for Hollywood but the majority of the NFL now is playing a Kyle style. would like it known he was not quoted as saying the word man beater that was exactly what Kyle said <laughs> does I <laughs> want to check, check the tape uh, so I mean Hollywood over his last 17 games 29 percent of those games over 10 and a half points the targets are what bothers me the targets say that like I think we all assumed Hollywood would be force-fed targets from his buddy I mean, I think that at the end of the day, yeah. you expect that to happen, yes. and that hasn't happened. That's most concerning. I don't care about does he catch the deep ball this week or the other week. 
I wanted to see double digit targets from yeah, Hollywood. Yeah, nine, ten, eleven targets every single week is what Hollywood should be getting. It's kind of what he was getting earlier in the season. He's got, he's got a ton of games with ten or more targets. Catch yeah. percentage is fifty two percent this year. Yeah, and and it, it's a real shame because, like you said, there are deep balls that are just not connecting. You know, uh, he had his man toasted, and Kyler underthrew him. Beaten. And what's that? He had his man beaten. Yeah, see? Uh, um, and Kyler underthrew him. You know, they connect on that play, all of a sudden you're happy. Um, you know, the way that when Kyler connected with Rondale, it was like, oh, this, that was a great ball. So maybe it gets better, but you're right. What are you going to do targets, this week? What are you going to do this week? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'm going to toil. Gonna go back? Going to go back? I'm going to toil and make the wrong decision. One can hope. Deontay Johnson, this Ooh, has been two, yeah. what? two disappearing acts for Deontay. Um, was that the other part of your trade, Josh? Did you get Deontay? Yeah, right. So Papa Josh got Deontay and Henry. How does Deontay Johnson have eight targets and 16 yards? Uh, I mean, because you he play only caught Cleveland. two of the eight, and the Cleveland defense is, is very, very yeah, good. De Deontay is not an auto start if you can put up numbers like this. I mean, it's been but this, like, this is one not for 17, Deontay. two for 16 on a, all those snaps. See, they're winning games by just like running the football with their two running backs and and snake in late game field goal uh, they, victories. They did not last. No, they didn't. But it was 13-10. <laughs> so I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on with Deontay. Oh, come on. I mean, this is the if, if you ask me what the storyline of the NFL is this year, what has kind of permeated the fantasy football landscape more than anything else, it has been a massive amount of quarterback injuries yep. and backup quarterbacks that you feel like you're coin flipping on whether they can get the ball to the players that you care about. Mm -hmm. uh, from Garrett Wilson to, you know, this situation with Deontay Johnson to Joshua Dobbs with Hollywood Brown and Addison to, I mean, every Gardner Minshew and whether, you know, every single time, uh, Amari Cooper, four for 34 on eight targets with Dorian Thompson Robinson because, hey, welcome another backup. Some teams, they have more than one backup. They get the opportunity. Desmond Ritter. Oh, Drake London's good. No, he's bad. No, he's not. No, now it's Heineke. This is what's there, happened. There are over 330 million people in the United States. How are there not 30 people who can play great at the quarterback position? I'm ready. I mean, you're, you're ready. For your chance. Like, I'm like, ready. Like, genuinely, with the amount, the hundreds of thousands of people that grow up right. and play football, they all the colleges, all the programs, all the high schools that care about football. I just can't believe that there you know, there are 15 of these guys that can do it in the NFL. Like why aren't there why aren't there 30 or 40 or 50 of these humans that can do it? It's just kind of crazy. You just it's the most important position in all of sports. It's well, the most difficult by a mile. And I mean half of them are in a hospital bed right now. That's fair. I just feel like you could go like throw a dart at an arena league quarterback and get better performances than some of these guys. And I know that's false. I trust me. I'm not don't take that out of context as a little soundbite. I know that's a lie. But my goodness. Yep. It's been rough. And and, and so we're gonna look dumb on some players. All of us. And I just mean the community because And the NFL. Look, if you have Deontay Johnson, just so you are aware, had three consecutive weeks of playing great football, same quarterback, same team, disappears for two weeks. Calvin Ridley disappeared for six weeks. It is um, – Jason says that, like, wide receivers are always inconsistent. Like, unless oh, you're, a, su being, those unless guys you're a superstar. And even those guys have bad games. But it is multiplied by these, these other situations this year where, look, you're playing with fire a little bit. Yeah, if you are new to fantasy football, it's it's not usually it's not usually like this. We normally have quarterbacks. Yeah, at and, least some. But at least like now we're moving to Jake Browning. Now we get to do Jake Browning and Jamar Chase this week. Everybody, mm, hooray! Fun. Sam Laporta had a big dud game. He's actually been uh, pretty bad lately. Porta potty kind of stuff. Evan Ingram down game. Ferguson. Uh, the Schoon Man had a touchdown. Oh man, that was, Andy did me dirty. I did. I was in the kitchen, yeah, uh, I getting, did. A, getting a drink while Andy was in the <laughs> studio watching football, and he yells out, "Ferg touchdown!" Yeah, and I, I was like, 
Yes, Fergie caught a touchdown. They're like one number different. They are right? 87, 86. Yeah, yeah. And then I and then it, but he did not get yeah. a touchdown. That was a uh, scoon man. We also want to start a petition, Mike, to uh, I'm, fix. Oh, I'm signing. I don't no, know. We're, we, you're just signing it. Yeah, I can make jokes. Um, we want a petition to change the number format for the Detroit Lions. Yes, because the nines. And the sixes, the number, like the... And the eights. And the, the, uh, well, the connection point on the nines and sixes, it comes so close to the bottom so an, that it could be mistaken problem. as an eight. So when you watch Jameson Williams and Josh Reynolds, and they're eight and nine... You can't yeah, ever oh, tell who's who. I, I think you should get fantasy points. It should cross. They well, should be one player. It just goes to both? Yeah, they go to both. Yeah, one I, of, or one of them needs, like, super long dreads or something. If you're going to be that close okay. in numbers, there's got to be... Or, yeah, wear, wear some, like... Wear an bright... orange headband over the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> well, why haven't we done this? Why haven't we put sweatbands on the helmet? Why do you think, Jay? <laughs> I think Honestly, I think it's because they don't make sweatbands that big. <laughs> yeah, and the helmets don't sweat, really. Yeah, but, um, it's, it's just but maybe some, looks. Maybe some bright shoes. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to um, go with the sweat Jameson thing. Williams did deliver. Yeah, touchdown. yeah. He touchdown. had his touchdown on What his. was his snap count this week? Because um, it had been rising. Let me take a little little look-see over there. He was at, yeah, they keep going up. 40, then 52, now 65%. Okay. Jameson Williams, uh, you know, closeout schedule looks like maybe there's some opportunity there. Chicago, Denver, Miami. I'm sorry, Chicago, Denver, Minnesota. Who knows? Maybe he's a know. surprise guy. Tank Dell and Jameson Williams winning titles? Tank Dell. Tank Dell, yeah. <laughs> Hawkinson, uh, it wasn't up to his standards, but he was the leader on the team. Four for 55. I can't watch Hawkinson get up anymore because <laughs> nobody goes down <laughs> and looks like he is. Maybe the hair flying around doesn't help, but he gets up slow. He looks like he's hurt on every play. To he be does. fair, I think he is very hurt. Like He, he has toughed through some really – Hard hits over the last couple of weeks. But he has courage. <sighs> he yes. does. Uh, and He's the king of the forest, man. The Man, that final drive for Minnesota, those Joshua Dobbs out passes to Hawkinson, why? Why were they doing that? That ball was – When he dropped – That thing had – that took a walker over to Hawkinson on the side, and it was so easy to defend. Yeah, and when he dropped the second one, I was like, thank goodness. Yeah. Because it yes. saves you a timeout. Um. Trey McBride, five for forty-three. Yeah, it's not, wasn't it's right. uh, wasn't it's right. what people hoped for in the Houston game, especially when Hawkinson or sorry Hollywood didn't get a lot of targets. But um, McBride will still be involved. Mm -hmm. Phew! <laughs> Do you God. win your games this week, Bruxy? Yeah, I beat this guy next to me. Inducers Alley beat Josh in Dynasty, but oh. he's happy about that. He's mm -hmm. he's tanking. <laughs> he is hardcore tanking. In fact, he you must have been. I mean, you must have been thrilled about the H N injury. I'd never be thrilled right, about an injury, right. but it did help me tank. Yeah, I don't know. You're kind of a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, no, we, the, we haven't moved on yet. I think it'll be a couple years, Mike. You know, okay. we had we had much we had gotten to the point where maybe he could come to Thanksgiving, but then I walk in this morning, and Papa Josh runs up and hugs me. Yeah. Against my will. He does that. And thanks me for the trade that got him out of Burrow and into Justin Fields and DJ Moore. Said I wouldn't have won the week without your so trade. That's the that's the kind of stuff I am fighting through on a daily basis here. But uh, just to be clear, because that he doesn't have to go to Thanksgiving now. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> Waver. So I just got to go hug my family Waver's. and I'll get uninvited? Yeah, give it a go, Mike. Waiver show tomorrow. I'm on it. Good luck if you have a Philly Chiefs <laughs> player tonight. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.